FOF TV is brought to you by the Lion's Den. The den always has been and always will be about enjoying family and friends in an environment steeped in Happy Valley tradition. So come back to the den, the perfect place to recall old memories while creating new ones. Mark Brennan here with the Fight on State Joe Paterno Weekly Press Conference Wrap, joined by Jeff Rice of the Center Daily Times. Jeff, what were a couple things that jumped out at you today from Joe Paterno's press conference? Well, you knew they were going to talk about not only Penn State's two quarterbacks, but Alabama's two quarterback system as well. And, and you could say that Joe kind of dodged that question a little bit, like he usually dodges the Penn State quarterback's question. But I think his point is valid in that with Alabama's offense, you really have to be ready for anything. You know, they came out last year in the four wide sets and really were able to go straight down the field. They could do that again this year. You've got the threat of Trent Richardson and the Wildcat. So really, you know, I don't know how much good it does Penn State to really pick apart each individual Alabama quarterback on film given the, the limited time they've both had in games. Yeah, I think both teams are kind of facing the same thing. And we're right outside of the media room here. As you said, he really didn't give an indication of who was going to start a quarterback, if he's going to play two guys. I get the sense that they're probably going to play two guys, but I'm inter interested to see if it's a real tight game. It's easy to go in there and swap quarterbacks out when you're winning by three or four touchdowns or whatever. Will he still be, be willing to do that uh, if it's, you know, the game's within a touchdown in the second quarter? Yeah, plus, you know, if Alabama scores a touchdown and you put McGloin in for Bolden, is it because Alabama scored or is it because you had planned to put McGloin in anyway? Any, any move they make is going to be scrutinized that way. Uh, the other thing that I thought came out of today, we got a little bit more news on the kicking situation, not too much. Joe said Anthony Farah is probably going to be back, but didn't say if he'd be back as the kicker, back as the punter, back as the kickoff guy, if he's going to even play at all, you know, and that's that was kind of the main question mark that came out of last week with, you know, how Evan Lewis and Sam Ficken did. Yeah, it was funny because people were actually pressing him on, uh, you know, will, if Farah comes back, will he be in a place kicking mix? And Joe just talked around that. Uh, he also mentioned Stephon Green. Uh, it sounds like he'll be back and uh, Derek Thomas uh, will also be back. These guys in the doghouse, coming out of the doghouse at precisely the right time. We had initially heard that Fair was going to be out for a couple games, but I think after, I mean, it was near disastrous. I mean, if there was one really bad thing uh, in that Indiana State game, you know, you miss a couple field goals, uh, the kickoffs weren't that great. I hate to be real critical of Evan, Evan Lewis because he's, here's a guy who uh, obviously, you know, doing his best out there, but they really need to firm up that kicking game in this huge uh, you know, intersectional game against number two in the nation. Yeah, and like you, you mentioned the missed field goals. I think there were 38 yards and 47 yards, which aren't easy kicks. I think the missed extra point was a huge red flag, though. Uh, Sam Ficken is a guy that's got talent, but do you really want him, a true freshman in there with no real game experience, kicking against Alabama in the fourth quarter? So I almost think you've got to put Farrah in there, but who knows what they're going to do. The other thing that jumped out, to, uh, jumped out at me, uh, Joe said that, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but the Penn State defense is a lot further along uh, than the offense. Now, I don't think that's any revelation, but typically I don't think he would say that sort of thing. You know, he, he's really looking at that offensive line, and I think if there's a trouble spot that he's really worried about, as, as he probably should be, it's that offensive line. We learned today that uh, Mike Farrell is going to be out for a couple of weeks. That goes from a sprain and probable to out for a couple of weeks, so that hurts depth there. Uh, that offensive line is going to be real key in this game. And depth was a concern even before Farrell got hurt. I mean, the drop-off between that first-team line and the second-team line is a pretty big one. You know, they've got John Urshel who can give them flexibility a couple spots, and, and Farrell could do that too. But they really can't afford any injuries to the starters, especially against Alabama. I kind of fed Joe a softball asking him about the way Penn State fans were treated down at Alabama last year. You were there. I mean, it was pretty cool the way they gave Joe a standing ovation. And from everything I've heard from all the fans who went down there, it was just uh, exceptional. I mean, they were just such hospitality. The only place where they were rude was actually on the field where, where the Crimson Tide kicked Penn State's butt. And he actually said that game was probably more lopsided than the final score indicated. But getting back to my original point, uh, he's really hoping that the fans kind of respond in kind. And that's not always happened at Penn State. I'm anxious to see how these fans respond to a great group of fans from Alabama coming in here. Yeah, I mean, I remember back last year, I, I saw Penn State fans tailgating with Alabama fans. I heard, you know, got great feedback from Bama fans and Penn State fans who said they'd really enjoyed it. I think in the past, you know, Penn State has had some, some not great in instances with the fans here. 
most of those have been night games. I think that this is a 3.30 start, might mitigate some of that a little bit, but you still hope that you know, Penn State just shows them some northern hospitality and you know, let, let the teams play it out on the field. Are you indicating that there might be some, something behind those night games, something that's fueling, uh, I guess is the way to put it, that, that people getting a little nutty? Yeah, and, and there were there were some similar fuels down in, in Tuscaloosa last year for a 3:30 start, you know, and and that went the way it did. So, uh, but you know, night games tend to be a different kind of atmosphere here. I, I think the weather won't be quite as hot this week as it was last week. It, if it stays like it is now, pouring, you know, there might not be a lot of tailgating for either side. So we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, Devin Still, Derek Moy, two captains spoke. Uh, both guys talked about the importance of this game and the ability to compete on this sort of national stage. You don't get this, that many of these sorts of games and for two seniors a uh, huge game not just for them but really it's a huge game for the program after this week uh, the, I don't want to say the, the the schedule gets a lot easier even though Moy called them exhibition games uh, but really if they could get through this game somehow and even if they don't uh, you have a little bit th things are a little bit easier until you go into November so this is this is huge to kind of set the stage for the rest of the season yeah you look at the way the schedule shakes out and Iowa could be a decent team Northwestern Illinois all decent teams but this is really the only opportunity before that big November stretch for Penn State to put a real marquee win on the table to really get themselves back into the national spotlight you know if they don't do that here or if they you know at least don't play well here it's going to be really hard to get momentum any kind of momentum going into those November games okay going into the big game what could people look for uh, from the CDT coverage wise what do you, what do you guys have planned this week uh, give a little plug to your coverage uh, we're going to have some stuff on you know the past history of Penn State Alabama they've had some great games in the past uh, we're, as always we'll have a player featured on the the pregame section we're going to have a column talking a little bit about stuff we mentioned about the the fan atmosphere and you know hopefully Things will go better there um, and just have all the you know news and notes from Penn State and Alabama. So be sure to pick up your CDT this weekend when you're in town and also visit fightonstate.com after the game. I want to thank everybody for being with us. Jeff Rice from the Center Daily Times, thanks for filling in and helping out. No problem, Mark. Good to be here. See you guys next week.